guys, it's Miharu, and it's come to my attention that some of you have never played Spyro before. To which I say, this is madness! I get it, everyone has their own reasons. Maybe it just never appealed to you, maybe you like Crash more, or maybe you've always wanted to play it but never got around to it. Trust me, I know the feeling. But for those of you who are interested, I thought I'd make this video to give you a little insight on what to expect from these games and tell you what I wish I had known as a kid. The original trilogy was made by Insomniac, the same developers who would go on to make the Ratchet and Clank series, but since it's fairly recent, I'm going to recommend the Reignited trilogy for PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and Steam. Though it does have its issues, I still think it's a very solid way to experience the three games for the first time, and I do believe it's the definitive way to play the first game. Spyro is, from top to bottom, a collectathon adventure platformer with very simplistic combat, meaning most enemies will only require one hit to defeat. The first game especially is all about the platforming, whereas 2 and 3 mix it up by giving you challenges in the form of minigames. The difficulty varies, sometimes it's smooth sailing, sometimes you want to throw your controller, but it's still a lot of fun and it differs greatly from Crash's arcade-style presentation. Don't go into this expecting any grand plots either, the closest we get to an actual story with some kind of depth is in Year of the Dragon. But anyway, let's begin at the beginning. Throughout your adventure, you may feel inclined to skip the dragons if you think it's just boring tutorial stuff. And yes, sometimes they repeat themselves, but please listen to them. Every so often their advice will help you. Also, they all have really cool designs and voices, so don't let all the hard work toys for Bob put into this go to waste. All the collectibles are important. Spyro 1 is, in my opinion, the easiest of the three to complete. Yes, there will be trial and error moments, mostly with the flight stages and the dreaded treetops, but don't give up. Unlike the sequels, there is little to no backtracking in this game, provided you do everything the first time around. So make sure that along with rescuing the dragons, you're collecting the gems and the eggs. And gems can be tricky to find, so make sure to use Sparks' gem finder ability by clicking the left control stick. While the levels are fairly linear, there are still secrets and hidden areas to uncover, so don't be afraid to experiment with blind collides. And if you're having trouble, turn on the minimap. It may just lead you where you want to go. Boss battles in this game aren't really battles for the most part. The stages act like regular levels, just with higher difficulty, and the bosses themselves are basically glorified enemies. A couple hits and they're out. Now on to 2 and 3. I decided to lump them together because, whereas 3 adds more playable characters, these are just the basics I'm going over and both games are similar in terms of how they play. For instance, as stated before, 2 introduced challenges in the concept of earning your collectibles through various mini-games that the NPCs have you do. This added some much needed variety to the gameplay, and it can either make things easier or more difficult depending on how you adapt to this kind of change. Gems also have a bigger purpose this time around, being used as currency to buy abilities, open doors, cross bridges, etc. Money bags here is usually hated for doing this, but don't worry, you will get everything back by the end, so just keep collecting. Take up the bank case, little brick. Yeah. <laughs> Let him crawl there like he crossed with a f***ing. There's also quite a bit of backtracking, especially in the third game, and I know that's an aspect not many people are fond of, but trust me when I say it's really not the worst thing. In fact, Spyro 3 improves on this by having the critter sections each be in their own separate challenge portal within the levels, making you feel as if you actually unlocked a new part of the level, where in 2 it's just, come back when you learn how to climb or head bash to reach this challenge. If you know how to climb, you could get up there and stop him. Don't feel bad about skipping challenges or not going for a 100%. In my opinion, the only reward that's actually worth the effort is Spyro 2's anyway, as it allows you a new game plus mode. The thing about these games is that they're fun to just play casually, and the fact that, well, you can play them casually. There will be certain tasks you have to complete in order to progress, of course, but for the most part, it's up to you and how you choose to play. There's so much to explore and you don't have to worry about executing perfectly timed jumps just to reach the end of a level. Despite what some people may think, Spyro is not a lesser crash. It is its own thing and deserves to be recognized as such. What I will say, though, is that the two go hand in hand, and if you play one, I think it's only fair to give the other a chance. That's gonna do it for this video, guys. Hopefully I've given enough info for those of you on the fence to try the games. Let me know in the comments below if you're new to Spyro or have any questions. As always, don't forget to subscribe and follow me on all my social medias, and I will see you next time. Until then, this is Miharu, signing off.